Growing up is something we all experience. For some, we can't wait. Others are nervous about it. But regardless of how you may feel, sooner or later, it's going to happen. For some of you, maybe it started already. For the others, it'll happen soon enough. Soon your body will start to grow in new and exciting ways as you discover new thoughts and feelings. It's called puberty. It can be a confusing time. It can be an exciting time. But if you can learn about it, if you can better understand it, then you can truly appreciate and enjoy this big new stage of your life. So come along with us, learn with us, and have fun with us in our little movie that we call Puberty for Girls, Amazing Changes Inside and Out. So let's get into it. Puberty is the name for a whole set of different physical changes that we all, boys and girls, will experience as we begin to get older. When, you may ask? Yeah, when? Well, for each girl it'll be different. Some sooner, some later. It may be as early as 8 or 9, or it may be as late as 16 or 17 years old. But for most girls, it'll happen around 12 or 13. I'm ready. You're ready? Oh, yeah. I'm ready right now. <laughs> well, it's going to happen sooner or later, believe me. Your body is going to start growing even faster than it is already. It's called a growth spurt. Girls usually start a couple years before the boys. You might notice that in your class, the average height of the girls may be more than that of the boys. It should stay that way. No way. No way. Uh -huh. no way. <laughs> Plus, the shape of our bodies begins to change. As we become taller, our hips become wider, and we begin to develop breasts. Generally speaking, we begin to have a more womanly shape. One of your first signs of puberty is when you notice little bumps behind your nipples. These are called breast buds, and they signal the development of your breasts. Then your breasts will begin to grow. You might feel a desire to wear a bra. Bras come in a wide variety of styles. They're designed to help give your breasts support. You don't have to wear one but many girls feel better wearing a bra. As we get older, our breasts develop. To what size? Well, breasts come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, and there's no such thing as normal breasts. They're beautiful no matter what their size. I absolutely 100% agree. Good. What else you got? Well, around the same time your breasts are beginning to grow, you'll start to grow more hair. You'll notice pubic hair on the area underneath your underpants. You'll also begin to grow more hair underneath your arms and on your legs. Just generally speaking, more hair. And we need to shave it, right? Well, no, actually. Not all girls and women choose to shave their legs and underarms. In other countries, it's not customary at all. But here, most women and girls choose to shave their legs and underarms. You may want to ask your mom or an older sister or a friend for advice and help. Take your time. But you'll definitely want to bathe more often. Take more showers? Yeah, showers, baths, just stay cleaner. You see, as we get older, our body chemistry changes, and we begin to perspire more, especially from the sweat glands in our underarms. I think it's time to start using deodorant. Sure, a deodorant will cover the odor so it doesn't smell as bad. But some kids like to use an antiperspirant, which will actually help you perspire less. Your armpits will actually have less sweat. Crazy. But the most important thing is just to wash regularly with soap and water. No problem. Plus, this will also help prevent acne. Pimples, right? Right. You see, we have sweat glands all over our face. If one of these glands were to become clogged, where do the oils go? Well, it can back up and infect the area surrounding the gland. The area pusses up and rises to the skin. This is acne. Most kids, to some degree, get acne, and it can be a real pain. It can hurt, and kids don't really like the way it looks. So what can you do? What? Wash your face regularly with soap a few times a day. This will help your pores to stay free from oily backup. If you develop a serious problem, you may need to visit a dermatologist. That's a skin doctor who can perhaps prescribe special medication. That may help. So what causes all this crazy stuff? 
pimples and breasts and growth spurts and hair? What's going on deep within us that makes it all happen? Hmm, I wonder. Let's go ask a doctor. So your name's Dr. Q with two E's, right? That's correct. Oh, okay, I thought it was EY for some reason. No, a lot of people make that mistake. It's K-E-E. -E. And you're an obstetrician? Yes, I'm an obstetrician and a gynecologist. Okay, and Q the CG? Well, you can call me an OBGYN for short. I'm a doctor who's responsible for women's reproductive health. I help a woman out with her organs that uh, bear children. Okay. So, what exactly starts puberty? Well, the short answer is hormones. Hormones? Hormones are deep inside your brain and other organs in your body, and they act as messengers. They basically travel throughout the body and deliver a message that says, Psst, this is what you should be doing. In other words, they tell the body how to act. So we have a puberty hormone. Well, I guess you could say that. There's really no such thing as a puberty hormone, but it all starts in a small gland deep within the brain called the pituitary gland. And cue the animation. The pituitary gland begins to make certain hormones that say, okay body, it's time. These hormones travel through our blood down to our ovaries. We have two ovaries located below our belly. Each is only about the size and shape of an almond, and inside each you have thousands of very, very tiny eggs that you were born with. The hormones tell the ovaries to begin to make estrogen, another hormone. This estrogen travels throughout our body and tells our body to grow larger breasts, pubic hair, and to have a more womanly shape. One of the eggs inside one of the ovaries begins to grow larger and larger. It reaches the surface of the ovary and then pops through. Right next to the ovaries are the fallopian tubes. They have a fringed end that captures the egg and carries it down through a thin tube toward the uterus. The uterus is shaped kind of like an upside down pear. During this time, the wall of the uterus becomes covered with a lining made of tissue and blood. This is like a pillow to protect the egg if the egg becomes fertilized and the woman becomes pregnant. How does an egg become fertilized? From the man. You see, there are um, two of the boy's reproductive organs are called testicles. During puberty, the testicles, or testes, begin to produce a male hormone called testosterone. Also, the testes are responsible for producing sperm. Sperm are the tiny male cells that are necessary for producing babies with a female. Throughout a man's life, his testicles will produce millions of sperm. He may get an erection, which means blood flows into the tissues of the penis, making it stiffen and stand up. When this happens, it may be possible for the sperm to travel from the testes through various tubes where it is mixed with semen, then through the urethra to be ejected out through the penis. This is called an ejaculation. The sperm are able to travel or swim, and if one can reach a woman's egg while on its journey to the uterus, well, then the egg becomes fertilized. The egg will attach to the lining, and it will grow. One cell becomes two, two cells becomes four, until voila, a baby is created. Amazing. It's the miracle of birth. But if the egg is not fertilized? If the egg is not fertilized, then the body no longer needs the lining in its shed. So it simply slides out of the uterus, down through the opening called the cervix, through the vagina, and onto, well, probably your underpants. You, I went in the bathroom, and then I, I felt something coming on me, so, you know, I automatically go to the toilet. And uh, it was there. It was, uh... And it was, like, red, and I was like, oh, you what? Know, what is this? I yelled out to my friend, get me a pad! Like, I woke up the whole house. I thought it was hair rolling. <laughs> So I, 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 <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, I got hemorrhoids. I didn't know anything about it, and I was scared. Because you were ignorant. Because I didn't know too much about it. <laughs> you were not listening to educational videos. Yes, I was, but I just school. thought it was hemorrhoids. I just was kind of shocked. I was surprised. I didn't know too much about it. For some girls, the first period can be scary, especially if they weren't told about it. But it's a very natural part of our growth, and it happens to everybody and there's no normal period. For some girls, it can last just a couple of days. For some girls, it can last much longer. Some girls will lose lots of blood. Some girls will lose hardly any. The thing to remember is that it's natural and that's something that we all experience. Don't be afraid to tell others or ask for help. There's no need to be shy. As a matter of fact, it's something to be proud of. And so I called mom and she was like, oh, Q, this is wonderful.
Ooh, you're becoming a woman. <laughs> I'm like, Here, it's a gift. You're a woman now. And I was like, oh my God. Uh. She would tell me, oh, it's just you're becoming a woman. I understand that you're hurting. And oh, I just hate that. <laughs> She's like, get away. It's not. You're, you're, once you hit your period, you're not required to wear makeup. You're not required to like wear sexy clothes. Or yeah. You're still, you're still a young girl, and or whenever you get it, you're still a girl, and so you become a woman. Okay, just, but it doesn't mean that you have to fulfill these certain womanly roles. Yeah. I mean, you still have a long time ahead of you to do that. When you have your period, you'll have to use protection because your your clothing might get stained with blood and tissue. For example, this is a maxi pad. Maxi pads are bigger than mini pads and they absorb more. They're both worn on the outside of the body. Uh, and the instructions are on the box, so you can follow what the box says. There's a tape strip on the back which you remove and that helps it to adhere to your undergarments. Um, or you can use tampons. And some tampons come with an applicator tube that helps you to insert it inside of the body. Uh, tampons may offer you more freedom, for example, if you want to go swimming while you're on your period. However, tampons aren't for everybody, and for very young women, they're not recommended because they can cause some complications. Complications can include toxic shock syndrome. Toxic shock syndrome is rare, but a very serious illness. It's caused by um, bacterial toxins that come from the vagina and go into the bloodstream and can cause a woman to become very sick. If at any time when you're using tampons, you develop a high fever, uh, become ill or dizzy, you should remove the tampon immediately and notify a doctor. That's scary. Yeah, but keep in mind that it's very rare. It, it tends to occur when a tampon is left in for a very long period of time, and millions of women prefer to use tampons. But if you're a young girl just starting with her period, it's preferable to use pads. But it's a personal choice. It's a personal choice. Okay, now what about PMS? PMS, PMS stands for premenstrual syndrome. Premenstrual syndrome. Right. Premenstrual syndrome can occur right before or at the onset of a girl's period. Um, and it's different for everyone, but a common symptom is to have cramps, which is a deep, dull pain low in the belly. Right. Another common symptom is moodiness, and girls may find that their emotions are more powerful. Nothing's right, and nobody can say anything. I'm tired of the sympathy. Oh, I know what you're going through. No, no you, you don't. don't. The pain is coming. I get cramps, but I also get very crabby. And because a lot of people don't know, don't realize that they have a mood swing, like you, like me. So what can you do? Well, the best thing to do is take care of yourself. Um, for some girls, that might mean taking it easy. I usually just take it easy. That might mean laying in bed. I like to just lay in the bed. Making yourself a cup of herbal tea. Hot tea. Um, heating bath. pads. Heating pads. Heating pads are heating pads. wonderful. I mean, I'm taking a long, relaxing bath. Take a hot shower and Stay then after you take your shower, make make yourself feel clean. Or for some girls, it helps to be more active. Let's do crunches. I like to do exercise tapes. To stretch and exercise, to walk, go for bike rides. Right. Just think about your health, your physical and emotional health. Do whatever it takes to keep yourself happy and healthy. For example, diet and nutrition are very important. We need those vitamins and minerals. Definitely. Your body needs plenty of vitamins and minerals. You need to eat healthy, well-balanced meals and get plenty of exercise. Because our bodies are growing so fast. So fast. Our bodies can use all the help that we can give them. Great. Hold the smile and fade out. Cue to the outside. So what about boys? For this, I decided to ask in a different kind of expert, a boy. You mean young man. I mean young man. This is Yasi, host of the Puberty for Boys video. I talk to a lot of boys, and you can pretty much say that it's the same, but different. I see. I mean, we have a growth spurt. We grow taller, our shoulders become broader, our sexual organs become larger, and we grow more hair. And eventually, we will want to start shaving. But not your legs and underarms. Right, exactly. Same but different. And hygiene? Definitely want to wash more with soap and water. We have the same problems with acne, stuff like that. But we don't have to deal with that, you know, female stuff. Like periods. Uh-huh, yeah, that stuff. What about sexual attraction? You mean like when girls become really cute? <laughs> right. Yeah, that happens. But the cool thing is, most of the guys I talk to all agree that the most important thing is friendship. 
I think that's the most important thing in the world. Right. Finding someone who truly cares about you, for who you are as a person. Right. Someone who respects you for you. Life is too short. Youth is too short, you know? Spend it with people who enjoy you for you. Exactly. But what does it mean for you? Let's ask another kind of doctor, a counselor specializing in helping young people. This is Dr. Pamela Brandt. You are a psychologist, right? Exactly. I work with girls your age in both individual and groups and talk to them about their relationships with peers, their relationships with families, and try to help them make some sense of this stage of life. Is that your dog? Yeah. <gasps> What's his name? Buddy. Hi. Hey, buddy. So, we learned about what happens when a girl goes through puberty physically, but what are some of the mental changes that occur? Well, both mentally, emotionally, and I think socially, there's a lot of change that goes on at your stage of life. Um, there's probably no other stage of life where you go through these kinds of changes. What kind of changes? first change that comes to mind is a change in family and you probably can relate to this and I know I hear from a lot of teens that what they want to do is they want to be with their friends all the time that's where they learn that's where they feel comfortable on the other hand to a degree because I've talked to some girls who have distanced so much from their family that they rarely see them or talk to them relationships with parents <laughs> Start out very good, <laughs> and then you get older. I am having a hard time with my parents right now. Because their make, main concern when they see you starting to get more independent is safety and health. You know, because they get scared. I mean, think of your kid, you know, leaving yeah. you. So just one phone call could really help. You should always, like, have a conversation, like, a good sit-down conversation with them. You know, you should realize that you're kind of lucky that somebody does care where you are. So another big issue, as you know, groups of teen girls can become critical or can start to gossip about another girl. You know, one week we're your friend and the next week they'll write you a note and say, we don't like you. Or And uh, there can be punishment or scapegoating when you don't conform to the standards of a group. You know, dress like them or have new clothes or... How they are look, how they look or how they are acting or what they are doing. Right. It's probably the most painful part of adolescence. And it's just, you know, that's kind of ridiculous. It's bullying behavior. It's hateful behavior. It's not a good practice, actually. So what I really encourage teens to do is to think about whether or not they want to participate in that kind of gossip, whether they want to sit and listen to something that may be hurting a friend of theirs. I think after a couple of years you realize who true, what true friends are. So what about boys? Boys. Well, I know that that's a big topic at this stage of life. In the beginning, of course, it's just learning about the relationship and having fun. But as time goes on, and I talk to some of the girls, they tell me that what they're looking for is love and a long-term relationship and affection. Are boys looking for the same things? No, I don't think for the most part boys are looking for that kind of love and connection. Um, hormones can get moving and without even thinking about it girls and boys can get into more intimate kinds of relationships more physical relationships it's very important especially for girls to be thinking about whether they're ready for this and whether they want this your friends having sex at like 11 and 12 you don't and 13. Have sex. you don't want to have sex like um, I'm still a virgin and it's like I something that especially when you get older it's something that you you take you you're very like proud about you know I in no way regret anything about my virginity or, or I'm ashamed of it and yeah. people don't 
look at you and they're like, oh, you're a virgin, that's so stupid. No, they look at you and they're like, that's really cool. She's yeah. cool for holding that. Yeah, definitely. And then, I, I mean, I've heard, like, when you finally find the right person and you're old enough to, to realize what sex is and, and you give it up, it's the most beautiful thing. And why do it when you're young and it's just some guy you're doing it with? Like, exactly. That's not going to mean anything to you when It's you not. Get have confidence in yourself. Like, wait, that what you have, what you are not giving up is the most beautiful thing. It's the most special thing. It really is to not give it up. Like, and, like, imagine giving it up to some random guy that you're going to break up with in, like, you know, a month or yeah, two later. Yeah, definitely. You'll regret it completely. Yeah. And if you happen to be in a relationship with somebody who thought it was just fun, you can find yourself feeling very hurt. Used a little bit. Very used, and it, which is a horrible feeling. So there are girls who feel, again, that sense of isolation, um, that sense of being devalidated, um, looking for love and finding that somebody just wanted to have sex with them. Okay, and I, that's one thing that if I could tell mm -hmm. anybody in the world to watch out for, it's guys that say they like you a lot and they have nothing to do with you. I think right now I mostly have just a lot of good friends that are guys. Always take charge, always be strong in a relationship because yeah. you never know. So it's very important to feel that you can assert yourself and say, I'm not ready for this. That's one of the biggest pieces. Uh -huh. um, I think it can be a very pretty painful thing for a lot of girls. Right. So another big issue, the issue of self-image. Girls do, as you know, put a lot of emphasis on how they look. Yes. And you just yes. look in the mirror and like, oh, I hate myself. I look ugly today. <laughs> You feel ugly and you don't feel good about yourself. Like, I had one with my butt. I thought my butt was very big. Unfortunately, the models and images that are shown in the media, on TV and in magazines, of girls who do not have developed breasts, who don't have hips, be skinny, very thin, and not very shapely, and somewhat aloof. Have you noticed that? Yeah. About was my nose. I hate those apps. I just wanted a nose like you know, that I see models have. And be like, oh, I'm fat, I don't look yeah. like this girl on the cover of the magazine. There's a pretty high prevalence of eating disorders among teenage girls. You know, people have that weight problem where they'll eat too little. That's scary. It is scary. They're not happy with their body. And she was already skinny. And they're ashamed with their body. And she was already thin. When they have perfectly fine bodies. It's, it scares me really bad. You know, that's got to be a horrible thing to go through. Mm -hmm. That's unfortunate. It's very unfortunate, and it's a very painful thing. You have to have something in your body for it to run. And if you go on a diet, don't say I'm what you're not going to eat. Say what you're going to eat. Just eat healthy. Say, I'm going to eat more carrots. A lot more teens, though, are starting to think about nutrition and to think about things that are healthy like any other vegetable more than I do carrots and broccoli. Ooh, I like potatoes. Oh yeah, potatoes. Make sure it's kind of balanced. Like this sandwich, this is chicken. Food's good. And chicken's good for you. Just don't go crazy on it. I want a candy bar for breakfast. You no, know, skip that snicker bar after lunch. Don't have like four or five candy bars a day. Drink more water than pop all the time. You stop drinking soda for a week and to think about things that are healthy. And just drink water and juice. What is healthy in terms of diet? You'll, your body will get used to that. The other thing is, exercise is always a good thing. Exercising is, is important, like be on, be on sports. Exercise, exercise is fun. Join you sports fun. teams at school. Maybe you can play some soccer with some friends. Do you extracurricular activities at school. Maybe like ride your bike, your road bike, like skateboard, anything like. Walking. Walking is a good one. Get out there and play a game of football with yeah. you guys and yeah. make you feel much better. Yeah, get out there. Relationships give you a lot of things, but activities making you feel proud of yourself are really important. Go on trips and, and have fun. In other words, developing interests. You can you can do theater and, and, and get into plays and shows right. and all that. Do some music. Go walk around, like have fun, go to the park, go to like Great America. Go to the beach. What might be fun? Yeah, you know? go see movies. Go like, see movies. That's always good. And really enjoy it, which is great. It's a nice outlet.
so much fun just to like relax and, and have a good time with your friends and laugh and not worry about what you look like. Yeah. It really doesn't matter. Nothing to worry about. Everybody's different. Everybody's their own person. And you should just love who you are. Say it. Say something. Yeah, I love myself. I love myself. You look in the mirror, what do you see? see? I see pride. I see power. You know, I see love. 